Hail, hail the Celtic star here, and what the hell do we care now? We've went and done it, the season is over, we've got the trophy, and it was never in doubt, it was never in question, was it? Uh, we're here for the Celtic star here flagship podcast, I'm Quinny, and I'm joined as ever by Josh. Josh, good to see you, mate. Hail, hail. Good to see you, good to be back. A really good weekend uh, at Celtic Park, it was, obviously, trophy day, can't really beat it, and all eyes in the cup final now. Yeah, definitely. And again, we've got Mike, good to see you, mate. Hail, hail. Hello, hello everybody. It was also a good weekend in Sydney where I watched it on my telly and felt very jealous of all the people down the Trongate and having a great time. Yeah, well, Trongate was ground zero. I was there myself. I had my camera. I don't know if any of you caught the, the Trophy Day video that we put on the channel, uh, but the last like half of it is just like me going through the crowd, fireworks <laughs> going off, banners, smoke bombs. Uh, it was amazing. I did it last year by accident. I didn't know that was going to happen, but this year, obviously... I had an idea if we win, if we get the trophy out, Tron Gate's going to fill up again. And it was brilliant. I think, you know, when I was going around with the camera, I think a few people, like, when they see the camera, it just brings the song out. So, like, if you watch it back, like, there's, like, three little pockets where, like, the big song all kind of starts from, uh, from like, just people seeing me with the camera and just singing into it, and we, we get it going. If anyone's ever been anywhere near me in a football match, I'm a very loud shouter and singer anyway. So if you give me a bit of encouragement, I'll megaphone it. So it was an absolute, it was it was a great time. And honestly, I, I didn't really think about talking about this, but um, no trouble, no issues, no nothing like that. And uh, I was seeing some nonsense reports in the papers about all the mess and all that, which fair enough, there probably was a mess. But it was a uh, top atmosphere, all friendly, all love, all celebrations, you know. And uh, the City is the city Ours banner was out. I say smoke bombs, fireworks, it was all going off. But yeah, the Tron Gate was... Uh, it was massive trophy day from start to finish, guys. I don't know if you'd like to give me, uh, you know, your, your thoughts and feelings on it all. We've obviously got Joe Hart's send off. We had Santa mm -hmm. in the house as well, which mm -hmm. has really helped me with the kids because a few of them go to school with, you know, some other influences, as it were. And, you know, it helps squash that when you've got Santa wearing the green and white hoops coming <laughs> out when he's not working. He's not on shift now, you know. This is the middle of summer mm -hmm. to deliver. The, the the trophy the, uh, that was absolutely great but yeah yes, trophy sir. day was lit so you can start my my review of trophy day starting with uh, well firstly it's good to know that if you walk through the crowd with a camera people like you because i had to do that for work once as a journalist obviously without a camera i had a still camera to take pictures in the two in the tall cranes in govan the first game we played rangers back in 2015 against this iteration the two nil win and all every person I took a picture of, I got, are you from the digger? Which I thought that's a <laughs> very niche piece of Glasgow culture there. So you did better than me. Um, so my first question, which I'll, I'll you know, this is, I, I'll tell you how my trophy they went in a minute. But was it warm? Because on Celtic TV, we had Jerry McCulloch going around the pitch, sort of trying to ruin everybody else's celebrations by grabbing up Celtic TV. We were just sort of like, mate, leave it. It's fine. And he kept going about how hot it was. And then when I looked it up, it said it was like 21 degrees, which I have to say, I mean, admittedly, I do live in Australia. That's not very hot. Was it Was it roasting? Was it? Was he wrong? Jerry McCulloch was probably in a suit, and that's why he was probably roasting. Um, or he's just a roaster. Like, it, could be Maybe a, just, it was roasting. It was roasting, I will say. It was warm. Well, that was my only question. I, as, as for everything else, I've worked for a long time, and then Sally kicked off at 9.30, so it was great. Sat around, watched it on my sofa, ate some chocolate, and then went to bed. What party time? That's a brilliant title for it. For me, um, I went up to see the Joe Hart lift the trophy up the Celtic way, and then was in my seat for about half eleven for a half twelve kickoff. Um, then watched the game. Then we got. I was there for the site for the fan media press conference after it. So we got Greg Taylor, Forrest, and Hart. Um, then I just went home after it quiet Saturday night, didn't bother with the Tron Gate. I went to the Tron Gate the first year. It was kind of done the first Ange season um, and I've not been back since but I don't know, depending on what happens in the cup final, the Tron Gate might happen again I don't know what the script is with that but no, a good good trophy there was, and it was good to get the three points as well You know, it, it doesn't mar it but at the same time it does kind of put a wee thing over it if you don't pick up the three points I remember winning in Stabardine a couple of years ago, Brendan Rodgers' second season, where they walked away 1-0 winners, Andy Considine scored um, on trophy day, and that was quite disappointing, but good to get the goal. And But one thing about the game, I don't know what your guys' views on this are, 
Luis Palma, man of the match. I think that is the biggest wrong decision of all time. Now, Josh, I've got a point on this. I So what we had in Australia this weekend, my real job, it was, it's called the Magic Round. Where basically, they play all the games in one stadium, which was in Brisbane. Mm-hmm. And so I was just watching them all off the TV because I didn't go. Normally, I'd go to a game. Um, but I won a bit of money on it. And I very rarely bet on other games. I bet on ranges, basically, to, you know, insulate me against pain. But I bet on uh, us to score four goals and Lewis Palmer to score. So when that goal went in, what, well, the 87th minute, I tell you what, I was happy to vote in Man of the Match because it won me quite a lot of money. But I had it that, I had that as a single Lewis Palmer would score. And it was like, oh, was, they use different odds here. So I thought, it was about five to two, right? It was pretty good odds. And then I had Lewis Palmer to score and four goals. So when the ref, who was one of the new ones, I don't know who he was, decided, we don't need any stoppage time here. We know what's happened. I'm like, mate, 10 more minutes. We're going to win this game. We're going to score again. And I'm going to win my bloody bet. So, yeah, I'll give it to Lewis Palmer for winning me at least some money. But he could have won me more if the ref had let him play on. I agree, Josh. I heard that in the stadium. I think I actually left that detail out of the, the match review video. Although, like, Palma does come out of this somewhat a winner. I've seen some posts around Twitter and whatever, like, uh, writing his numbers and his stats up and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah. anyone who watches this guy, like, yeah. the whole time he's been here, never mind that game, because that game was a real, like, a great encapsulation of what he isn't, you know, quite simply, you know. And honestly, I turned around to the people that I was with. It's, you know, see after he scored the goal, he starfishes on the ground. I get that, right? He has been probably quite nervous or not. You know, he knows he's not putting in a good shift. Yeah. And then it's a bit of relief. Oh, thank God, I got the goal. I've done my bit or whatever. But then after that, he gets up and he's doing all his daft dancing. Well, and I'm me. like, me. how are you not embarrassed by yourself yeah. right now? Like, you have been terrible. Do you think we like, should, do you think you should go on Instagram and put up some, like, uh, put up some posts afterwards about being a, you know, a... Goldberger or something? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Like a certain Rangers midfielder. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, Palma, it's just, I don't, it feels like he wants to be the centre of attention. Like you seen it on at Rugby Park when Celtic won the league last week. He was doing all his dancing and then does it again at the weekend, centre of the celebrations. And listen, see if you're Adam Ida, who's scored crucial goals in this title race and continues to do so, dance all you want. But when you're Lewis Park, is arguably one of the most frustrating players to watch in this Celtic team and you're bringing out those dance moves after you score a back post tapping in a arguably meaningless game then I don't know I'm going to point out here for one don't you ever call that tapping meaningless that won me like $25 <laughs> <laughs> and secondly that meant that we actually the Clement finished with a worse record that's, that's real and if had that had he not tapped that in that would not be the case um, he's got strong main character energy, which is my new favourite phrase. But like, he is very yeah. much he thinks he's right. Although, can we go back to Killy? Because I would like to award. I text a lot of my mates saying this, so I was going to put it in our chat, but I forgot. Yeah. The Andre Blackman Award for most celebrations at a title win, in relation to how little they contributed to that title win, <laughs> and I would like to award that to O. Oh, he was giving it the big one. I thought, mate, one goal <laughs> against he won one goal, one goal against was it St. Mirren off the pass St. Mirren, of yeah. Old and Home, actually, who was also sighted with his little neck beard. But I thought, I mean, how many titles will he win in his career? Go go for gold, mate. But I'm not sure that you could claim again if it was Adam either, you know, party on Wayne, party on Adam. But if you're oh, just Maybe sit at the back and shake some hands and let somebody else do the dancing. Yeah. Two goals against Hibs early December. Two goals against Aberdeen and uh, penalty one that might be mid November. Goal yeah, he's, no, he's, got, he's got one. He scored winner against the Mirren. I think the other ones in fairness they were more like third of a three. Four nil and six uh, six nil and four one those games. Yeah. Were. Oh, the one of them he did absolutely body and uh, was it a Hibs player? You know, when he goes over the top and he yeah. just, that was very satisfying. I mean, I don't know if he's. I've, I quite like all the books. I've quite like the centre of everything. Yeah, but you get you get the Blackman Award for you then, mate. That is, yeah, I've, 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 me and my brother have a running joke of what we call the Jimmy Triori Award, who's the worst player in every Champions League winning team in honour of his cool. in 2005. 
So you can now take for the rest of time the Andre Blackman Award for the person who celebrates most with having done the least to earn it. Fair enough. Oh, I, I think I'll be interested in the comments. If you have a different Andre Black, I think <laughs> Oscar about five goals there. That's not that bad, you know. Like, yeah. but I, I, I definitely love this. Uh, so, I mean, Andre Blackman jumped for, the, for those who don't remember who aren't sad enough. Andre Blackman played about three games for us, but ran in front of the crowd. It was it. Maybe Killy with a huge like one love telling black and we won the title there once and it was I think it was in the the game we won six 0 maybe. Cool. Could have been I'm that one. Ago. If he was but, still at the club, my Andre Blackman award would have gone to Alessandro Bernabe because you just know he would have been the centre of all those celebrations if if he was still giving there. everybody lifts on from a uh, giving <laughs> Joe Hart and <laughs> 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 allegedly his license bye. Yeah, shouldn't yeah. joke about that, mate. I don't know, but still. Um, yeah. I think like, I, I'm kind of in agreement with uh, with uh, all the Palmer stuff and everything else we've all kind of said there on that. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Andre Blackman Award, I do absolutely love that one. I don't remember him, him doing that, but I do not doubt it for a second. So that's a fantastic one. Um, I'm going to find the video and send it to you now. There's, there's a brilliant <laughs> picture of him, the big old flag. <laughs> there's a picture of him. Effie Ambrose and what I think is Rabiu Ibrium dancing Ooh. around the trophy. <laughs> this, is, this is gold. This is this is the thing. I don't even know these guys' names. Oh, do you, you don't remember Rabiu? You don't remember Rabiu? I thought it was Wakasa Mubarak, uh, but it wasn't. It? Oh, Wakasa. Rab- Scored away in Salzburg. Hey, yeah, Wakasa, 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 I remember him. Salzburg, like. he basically Rab- Rabiu was this wee guy that was meant to be like top 50 wonder kids in the world from Nigeria. Attacking mm-hmm. mids, uh, similar he to maybe to Odin, but actually, he was absolutely tiny, yeah. He never so, played ever. So, there's this picture here, which I think is this this really dates it. It is Victor Wanyama, Chad Uri, Keith and Young, Andre Batman on the tr- holding the trophy. Is that Mo Bangura? And it could actually be Mo Bangura, yeah. <laughs> but the dancing around the trophy with Effie Ambro, oh, with Victor Wanyama, sorry, is spectacular. And this isn't even what I was thinking of because. We won. That's the trophy day. But we won the trophy. I think at Killy or Dundee's yeah, against Fulman, Charlie. Mulgrew. And he had a huge Green Brigade flag, and he was like running up and down the touchline with it, with like the one love. Do you remember these have yeah. like the reggae kind of colours? Well, yeah, it was that one. He up and down with. So that was Saturday, and you know, like we go on now, and we're, we're edging closer to maybe being able to take this moniker as the most successful club in the world and all that caper, so another title in there, but on the Sunday, it was history, it was title number one for the Celtic women's team, which was, you know, just adds to the weekend, doesn't it? It's double double titles, Saturday and Sunday. What more can you ask for? Yeah, I, know, I, th- I think the manner in which it was done it as well made it so much sweeter, obviously. 88th minute, it didn't look like they were going to do it, not getting over the line again on the final day. But uh, Amy Gallagher scored at the last minute. Absolutely brilliant scenes um, at Celtic Park. And if you look at the BBC live coverage of it, the live match day blog thing, you see um, they're putting a post on from the Rangers game. Rangers were 4 0 up against Partick Thistle. So, last five minutes of the game, they're obviously thinking they're going to win the league because Celtic are still drawing. And then um, the, the blog post is news of Amy Gallagher's goal has reached the Rangers dugout, hands on heads. Uh, which I think was absolutely brilliant to see. And Celtic Women's very own um, Aguero moment, you could say. Uh, the goal as well looked a bit like Aguero's in the final day for Man City. So, yeah, really good to see. And hopefully it kind of sparks a, a peak of interest in, in the women's game. And Alina Sadiku, the coach, actually has done really well. She came in when Celtic Women were seven points behind, I want to say. Um, that was a post I seen on Twitter the other day. So, fair play to her for coming in. Obviously, Fran Alonso was loved by the fans uh, a lot for some of his, just his character in general, um, bit of a cult hero, but Alina's came in as a young coach and done really, really well and took the girls to the title, so good to see now they'll be in Europe next season. Well, I'd say big moment in my house, um, not particularly because my missus cares about women's football at all, but Alina Sadiku is Kosovan, which my partner is, so a big win for the Celtic Kosovan households, um, though she is Swedish, Mm-hmm. Born in Sweden, she's of Kosovan descent. So we'll we claim her. We take her. We take Kosovo Aslani from the Sweden women's team, and yeah, Jordan Shakiri. Unfortunately, we also have to take Alba Nieti under that logic. But, <laughs> you know, uh, no, it's great. I've watched the women's team for years. 
I, I obviously live in Australia, like women's football is massive here. You can't believe how big it is. Like the Matildas is for like the biggest sporting team Australia have. There's like the men's cricket team and the Matildas are like way more sort of popular and important and weirdly the swimming team during the Olympics because that's all they win Um But yeah, the Matildas last year, like we had the women's World Cup out here last year and it was unbelievable. It was like the biggest thing that ever happened. Um, I think it literally was like the most watched thing in the history of Australian TV since like the Sydney Olympics in 2000, maybe even more than that. So um, yeah, I follow pretty closely. Like I do a lot of women's rugby league as well in my day job. So I'm pretty across it. And yeah, to see them do so well, like especially like a lot of those players, like Kelly Clark, who's been there for so long. Like it's, yeah. And also last year where they were, as you say, on the final day as well, like they didn't win it. So yeah, to see him pick it up in that manner as well with Patsy Gallagher's granddaughter scoring the goal, very uh, sort of, there's a, what's the uh, quote, you know, there's a mystery about this club kind of thing. Yeah, yes. loved it. I think the only downside really was that because of the Celtic end stuff last year, we thought that could have been an entire end of supporters and that just never happened. But, you know, I know there's lots of people that go watch the women's team every single week and yeah, they've, they've really deserved it. They've actually won it kind of in a similar way to, like that, sorry, like the opposite way to what um, to what the men's team did because they've done it by thumping everybody else and sort of splitting the difference with Rangers, where it was kind of Rangers record against everybody else in the men's game is better. Yeah, and they just can't be us, which is good for, good for a cup final at the weekend. But um, yeah, so ten out of ten for them. Like they actually, I think they won it on goal difference by battering everybody else by more, yeah. and then just sort of doing, doing enough against Rangers. There's a couple of really big results about two months ago, I'm going to say. But yeah, it's um, it's something that's selling. Like Rangers invest so much money in it, so to overcome that financial gap is pretty impressive. Yeah, I think the the, the coach is definitely taken to the club. You know, I think I remember her being appointed, and she was mentioning Henrik and all the rest of it. And then we had the recent. Uh, what was it Henrik was over for the player awards the end of season yeah, awards yeah. or something like that? You know, and there was a bit of interaction between the two of them there and all the rest of it. So. You know, like you say, there's something special about the club and all the rest of it. And you, you do feel that she was kind of bringing a bit of that to the party. So I didn't really, I, I love the comparison with the Aguero goal because like, I, I don't know the player's names or whatever, but she is like in the box and then with, yeah. having no options around her, she just, when the ball bounces back to her, she just goes, fuck it. And she goes by two or three people and just slots it in. So there's a lot of similarities there. And the thought of that, imagine that was the same end as last year. I remember seeing the pictures of it and the videos and stuff. That would have been unreal. You know, that yeah. would have been, uh, a total uh, next level experience for for the team there. Of course, winning the league in the way they have is still, of course, hugely historic and fantastic and all the rest of it. But yeah, just feel that Celtic as a club maybe has dropped the ball. We spoke about that on the podcast when it happened a few weeks ago, whenever they decided that. But yeah, congratulations to the women's team and, you know, onwards and upwards into the Champions League now as well, which is good for them. Um, and I'm not sure, I don't know women football, but I think like, Glasgow uh, City, what's the furthest they've got? Is it like the quarters or the semis or something? No, sure. they've not got that far. The, the way it I works in the women's is a bit different. You play, it's not like in the men's where you play like a straight bracket to then qualify for the groups. Like you play like a little mini group because we've actually played in it before. Yeah, we played it last played season. In, in it was Norway. Norway. Yeah, we played yeah. I think, yeah. So you, you basically play like a little mini tournament in like all in one place. So they, I think it was they play like Valorant. Ah. Bronby rings the bowl, yeah. So they've done it before, but obviously now they're going as champions, so they'll go in later in and all that sort of stuff. So, cool. But it'll be different. It'll be interesting to see what the team does because the team that Fran Alonso had that came close last year, like half of those players left. Like it's a lot higher turnover of players. But what Celtic like have done is get players from other Scottish clubs. So I think Amy Gallagher was at, who scored Hibs. the winning goal, was at Hibs before? Yeah, she was at Hibs. So she like, joined oh, in, it'll be two years ago now she joined because she was there when, when Fran Alonso was there, but she's still... Obviously, here now, I think 50 goal contributions in all competitions this season. It's incredible. I amazing. I learned that from Follow Follow because they, if you think, uh, if you, yeah, if you want to see some some views on women's football, I'll tell you what, that's a fun place to go. But it was, there was lots of it's when you know you love it too much, is when you think, I'm not only going to go in and look when they lose men's, you know, like the big you know, internationally <laughs> famous games, but I'm really going to stick the knife in for the women's games as well. You know, it's just another one of my one of my mates is like one of the main sort of women's uh, sports writers in Australia, and when her team, Paramount Reels, like her rugby league team, got a women's team in the main comp here, she was like, "I thought it'd be great, but now I just realised that we lose twice in a weekend." <laughs> and I kind of like, so I, I, I have shared that I uh, we can now win two titles, which is brilliant. 
Yeah, which means twice as many visits to follow follow. <laughs> and I think like, there's, a, there's a nice wee segue here because it does look like uh, the other side of the city are doing a bit of business. They're going to be signing Liam Kelly, who was linked to us. I think we spoke about that last week or yeah. so. And, you know, it does raise a few questions about what they're doing over that side of the city, I suppose, or whatever. But it's one of those ones where a lot of people, I, I'm always of the opinion that this guy was a Rangers fan anyway. And I just didn't yeah. see the link to us being credible. We do often get this, whenever there's a weird Celtic link, Maybe a week later they will sign for Rangers, and then they, they just love to say, "Oh, you know, we both went for him and we got him." You know. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think no, they, pretty, I'm just going to throw out there that his name is Liam Kelly. Uh huh. I'll just leave that out there. That maybe I don't know. It doesn't sound like one of them. <laughs> I know, but I've I've forever heard like he's a uh, a Rangers fan on uh, podcasts and stuff. I think maybe Open Goal have said it, and yeah. uh, I'm trying to think of where else. But I'm I'm sure it's like. Quite well known. I think he played academy and stuff like that, that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, maybe there was in Rangers but... Academy. Um, it, it Celtic, I think he was only really going to come in and be the number two to fulfil the homegrown quota for Europe as a Scottish player. Um, over at Rangers, though, I'm not sure what he's going to be. Is he going to be number two? Are they going to sell Jack Butland and promote him to be the number one? If that was, if the latter was the case, I would be very concerned. But I doubt it. A lot of people were I'm not that concerned. I'm not really losing much sleep about it. Um, I would be concerned if I was a Rangers fan if that was the case. Um, but now Kelly, I'd think he's an all right goalkeeper. I don't think he's great. He doesn't cover himself in glory with a lot of crosses. There was a Scottish Cup game, Motherwell v Morton, uh, midway through this season down at Greenock and caused a goal that day. It was an absolute shocker from him. In the provisional Scotland squad that's just been announced, but he'll drop out ahead of the actual Euros. So, it's, listen, I don't think it's a bad signing if Celtic brought him in as a number two. And if Rangers are bringing him in as a number two, I don't think it's a bad signing. But if they're bringing him in as number one, then that would be a concern if I was a Rangers fan. Yeah, I want to keep it to himself he's in a, if he's in anything provisional with the Rangers fans. Um, he he was on the excellent Celtic by numbers Twitter account. They did a little stats bomb graphic mm-hmm. today and he was ranked, I think, the worst in the league. Yeah. Um, and it was basically one side of it was, I think it was expected goals conceded. So how many should, yeah. how many below, he sh- how yeah. many has gone in that he shouldn't have let in. And the other one was on ball value. So playing out from the back, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he was down here. And Joe Hart was basically right in the middle. Um, the interesting one, actually, the best goalkeeper in Scotland under that metric was Kelly Rhodes from Aberdeen. Yeah. Who I have to say, I've never thought anything interesting about at all, but. There you go. If you're going to sign, this, apparently, if you're going to sign a goalkeeper from Scotland, go and sign Kelly Rose. But we did good. that with Benji's. Out of contract, I believe, Kelly Rose this summer. But you see, I always think this, and I just remember that Benji Segrist was that guy, and yeah. Lucas Zuliska was that guy. And I mean, Zuliska. Yeah. But Benji Segrist is currently more famous for his Instagram than he is for playing the yeah. football. I had a great time in the weekend, though. I'll tell you what. Great. Oh, time. He, he was another. What, um, What's the Andrew Blackman. Andrew Blackman. He was another one right in the centre and the most. Nah, in love fairness it. to him, you don't, you don't, you don't know who the mates are. I, this is, maybe this can move us on to Joe Hart a little bit, just just because we should talk about Joe Hart. But like when he he clearly, you look at the the Player of the Year awards and the amount of players who gave him Player of the Year. You know, when the not you know Matt O'Reilly because he's handsome as Tyson said, but you know Matt O'Reilly is clearly the best Player of the Year. But so many of Joe Hart because he must be in the dressing room. That yeah. guy, like, and if I was, you know, a twenty-five-year-old Matt O'Reilly, I'm gonna go. I think Matt O'Reilly's even twenty-five, but you know, what I mean, I'm gonna go fucking hell. That's Joe Hart, like. So yeah, that does. It's not. It's not for nothing. Hmm. Well, I don't think we're going to be signing a goalkeeper from Scotland. I think that's the whole point. We don't want Kelly Russes and Liam Kelly's. Um, you know, just fancy Scott Baines. That's basically what we're talking about here. You know, we've already got that in the club. We don't need any more of it. Um. The big links that are coming out this week is we've got Cohen Castiles, who we spoke about on the channel a couple of times, free transfer out of Wolfsburg, Belgium number two. And I'm seeing a few more murmurs and rumours for Ara Janet Muric at relegated Burnley. Yeah. And this is the level of goalkeeper that yeah. we really should be going for. And this is like, right in, in yeah, let's customer. get one of these guys in. Let's get somebody yeah. like this in and we are levelling up. I think Castells would 100% be my number one choice. Um, obviously, 275 appearances for a team like Wolfsburg. He's going to be an elite-level goalkeeper. 
regularly playing in the Bundesliga for and Wolfsburg aren't even like a relegation threatened team, at least I don't think so. Uh, they're kind of top half of the table, usual no more than me, probably. But yeah, he looks really good. Uh, obviously, compilations can make, can make anyone good, look good. Vacuum Bio looked good in the video. Marian Schwed, um, the compilation king. <laughs> yeah, aye, Marian Schwed. Um, yeah, I would really back a move for Castells. The fact it's on a free as well is really, really good. If you're trying to get a goalkeeper like that and it was had two or three years left on his deal, you're looking at 20, 30 million probably. Um, so to get him in for free is really good and it's not like he's over the hill like perhaps Joe Hart people arguably thought he was when he joined the club at 34 Quinn Castell's only 31 goalkeepers play as seen with Hart until they're 37 years old 38 years old so this guy would come in and really be Celtic's number one for a long long time talk of Anderlecht now the reports in Belgium this morning saying that they're going to go all out for him but Celtic have Champions League football Anderlecht don't the only real factor that I can see him going to Anderlecht for is, is his homeland and perhaps he maybe has a better chance of still getting called up for Belgium if he's playing with Anderlecht, I don't know. Um, but yeah, definitely back this move. Muric as well is an interesting one. He's always kind of comes up when you're playing football manager or FIFA and that's probably nothing to go by, but it's true. Um, he plays came through Man City, signed for them when he was 16 or something like that. Several, several loan spells and Anyone that's kind of been with City Football Group from a young age is going to be half decent, as seen with guys like Jeremy Frimpong. So, yeah, I would really back a move for one of them. Castell's higher priority than Muric, but if you can get one of them in, then very happy. And listen, I wouldn't be averse to getting a Liam Kelly in if they were back up because Seagrass doesn't look like he'll be around um, for a while more unless he's thinking of making cute Instagram posts in and around Glasgow. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, I can't pass up Colin Castells just, just to use the... I'm pretty sure Castells is Dutch for castle. So, you know, to be safe as a castle, I like that. Uh, Arjun Muric, obviously, also Kosovo. And if he signs, I'll wear my Kosovo football jersey on the uh, on the pod just for him. <laughs> I haven't worn it in a couple of years, so could be, you know, somewhere around here. But <laughs> it's, yeah, I think Muric is because actually he... So he's basically displaced... Uh, James Trafford, he's just been picked in the England yeah. squad, I think. So I, Trafford was playing for Burnley. Signed him from, I want to say they signed from City or United, I can't remember which one. City, so was, City, yeah. The next big thing coming through, and Murray just basically took over from him at the end of the year. Like So he's been playing every week in the Premier League. He's a bit of a Fraser Forster. Like, I'm not sure how good he is playing out from the back, but he's massive. He's a six, he's six seven or something like that, which is always... Uh, well, always helps the free and goal. So, yeah, I mean, I'm excited about both of them. And there's also the Turkey goalkeeper from... Yeah, Chak. Oh, yeah. on spot. Yeah, Chaps yeah, on that's Chaps on spot, yeah. So, I think that is, like, if you go for the Turkey national team keeper, Belgian, you know, a guy who's played the Bundesliga and a guy who's playing the Premier League over the weekend, like, that's... I'm from the city system. There's, yeah. That's a level that I'm pretty happy with because I think we can, we're not going to go in for, like, a Queen and kind of level i think that's probably beyond us but yeah that next one below i mean 31 year old 200 games in the Bundesliga, playing for the belgian national team and we can go look mate you'll win loads of titles and play in the champions league he's a uh, that's your man isn't it? i know nothing about him but the vibes of it all yeah it's a big box picker. i think he's got a few champions league campaigns under his belt as well at wilsburg the Europa league runner two here or there so it's not like he's not played european football and like we know being in the Bundesliga, you're playing against Bayern, Dortmund, you know, Leipzig, a lot of these bigger teams repeatedly, you know, throughout the year and in cups and stuff. Muric is really well known for having the ball at his feet and stuff like that as well. He does have a bit of a, a gaff in him, you know, because he might, you know, come for a ball he misses and he might sweeper keeper. Like, he loves running off his line, by the way. This is something to, to know if we do get this guy is the term sweeper keeper. He really lives that life, you know, so... Uh, you know, it does give you something else defensively, you know, if you've got a high line, if you've got a keeper that's that threatening, but it's the only thing I would add in. I think he'll cost a significant transfer fee. I think with Burnley getting relegated, but if we could do something really cute, like get him in on loan with an option to buy next summer, and then we wait till the Champions League money comes in, see if he's any good, and then just use the Champions League money to, you know, like we do anyway with some guys. Yeah, I, it's very much style. Um, yeah, so I'd love that. Castillo's on a free is cool as well, but see if the club really wanted to push the worldwide brand and increase uh, shirt sales and jersey sales and everything like that. Um, the number one goalkeeper they should be going for is Nick Pope. 
a hundred percent. Not just for not just God, for keeping God ability. bless that man. <laughs> Imagine he would be the real holy goalie if Celtic signed. <laughs> um, that would be incredible. Nothing in it, but we're getting a little bit of uh, well, Newcastle may be buying somebody, so they may be on the market. I don't think that will actually happen. Oh. But someone, someone else said it to me, and I thought that is true. If they brought in a goalkeeper called Pope, they would sell a record amount of goalkeeper shirts. There's no two ways yeah. about that. Um, but Fraser Foster might be leaving Tottenham, and his name is bubbling around the the skirts of this as well. Um, I would take Fraser Foster to replace Seagrist. You know, I would take him for that. Just, I'm, yeah, not, I'm not going back a third time to Fraser because he's left yeah. us every time he's had a chance. You yeah, know, it's like, it's like going back to the yeah. it's, yeah. it's like it's second time it's all right, third time it's just a wee bit too much. Um, now nah, Fraser Foster, he's only ten months younger than Joe Hart, so it's not like he's wow, he's is he young. Really? Yeah, is he he's really? only. 10 Younger than Joe Hart, oh, so Lord. it's not like he's coming. He's in. almost the same age as me, then, because so it's a weird thing with Joe Hart. My old housemate was born on exactly the same day as him, like to the day, Aye, and so I know exactly how old Joe Hart is, and I reckon that he must be almost exactly the same age as me, Fraser Foster. So I don't know. It's just great radio. Oh, he's older than me. He's thirty-six. St. Patrick's. He's St. Patrick's Day boy like you as well, Connie. Nineteen eighty-eight. There we go. Nah. <laughs> to be fair, I think Foster, it's just nope. he's too old now. Um yeah. not in not in life terms, but in football terms. Um so yeah, that that was my view. I seen John Hartson coming out in the paper and saying, Oh, Celtic should make a move for him, he's a really good goalkeeper. I don't think he knows that Fraser Foster's just a wee bit younger than Joe Hart and you'd only really get a season out of him if that. So it's one I wouldn't do unless he was the number two because he'd be a really good number two to have yeah. in and around the club for experience. Um, and he knows the club, knows the city. Uh, so, yeah. I just checked that. Me and Fraser Foster have the exact same birthday. I was going to say, <laughs> if you're 1998, you're literally... <laughs> oh, wait, is that? I mean, like, my mate has exactly the exact same birthday as Joe Hart. There you go, That's Sam so Hegarty. He's a Sheffield United fan, so he won't listen to this, but... <laughs> it's bizarre, isn't it? Um, so yeah, hopefully we go for someone like uh, Castiles or, or Muric, we get one of those deals over the line. So I think that's the kind of statement of intent, that's the kind of signal that we need for going into this Champions League campaign. That's a proper uh, addition into a really vital spot. You know, Joe Hart leaves a big hole, you know, in body and spirit, you know, and whether it is uh, like a Bundesliga veteran in Castiles or like a proven up and coming like Muric played games for City you know he wasn't one of these guys like Frimponger and Cham that didn't actually get there he played games for them before yeah. they decided to you know get Zach Steffen and then Ortega and kind of rotate mm -hmm. second goalkeepers every summer for transfer financial fair play you know the, the Man City way as it is uh, so um, yeah I, I'm all about that and you know that kind of takes us on to something right we give Castiles all the credit or all the respect that that kind of transfer would offer on his credentials and what he's done and all the rest of it and so maybe bring us into scotland uh quickly after it right but youth player development is something that is uh it's very much like the unknown going into things we've seen uh liam kelly uh, pardon me daniel kelly uh if i can catch on the right line on my screen has been linked to leverkusen he's out of contract and celtic are trying to tie the kid down uh so with this like daniel kelly like whether he goes to, like, if he goes to Leverkusen or stays at Celtic, I think these two, I think this decision for a young player, and we've seen it time and time again with maybe somebody who's in the Scotland squad at the moment, yeah. is a decision that we've seen young players take where they leave. You know, we've seen it quite a lot over the last couple of years. So, do we have any faith that Daniel Kelly would sign on and stay at Celtic if Leverkusen are in for him? I think a lot of it depends on what guarantees by a Leverkusen given in terms of game time and what the plan they offer to him is when they present their case to sign him because already at Celtic he's kind of been given a decent bit of game time under Brendan Rodgers, been in the bench, scored Celtic Young Academy Player of the Year. So and I think there will be more chances for him next campaign. Um, obviously, depending on what happens with Paolo Bernardo, we don't know yet. Depending on what happens with Matt O'Reilly as well. Um, but at the same time, regardless of the plan by a Leverkusen offer him, the stature of them because they're a massive club now. Invincible Bundesliga champions, Europa League final tonight. We've got the DFB Pokal final is it at the weekend um, as well, which they, they should, should be win. Winning. They, they should Kaiser be winning. Slotten. Kaiser Slotten, they should be beating them. 
So they will be the double winning champions regardless um, if they beat Atalanta tonight or not. So it would be a very tough proposition for young Kelly to to turn down going over there at the AGS. It's a, it's a really good opportunity to go to a club like that who've under Xabi Alonso. He's going to be the manager again next season. Working under him could be a, a really good opportunity. And I wouldn't blame him if he decided to go. I, I think a lot of Celtic fans would be a wee bit better with him. Um, in the same way some perhaps were with Ben Doak about leaving the club at a young age but when these big teams come calling it's very very hard for Celtic to keep these young players at the club regardless of the guarantees they make them because you can't expect Celtic to say to Daniel Kelly oh listen son stay with us and we'll play every game because that's unrealistic you can't do that you've got to arguably offer them the same opportunities that a Leverkusen is going to offer them and it's really at the end of the day going to be down to wages and really what the player prefers to do is from Glasgow, he's from Scotland, he's a Celtic fan growing up, so perhaps that maybe will come into the equation and he's had a year under Brendan Rodgers, Brendan Rodgers seems to like him, the club clearly want to tie him down, um, I think it'll be just his decision at the end of the day, um, Celtic aren't really going to net anything financially from this, it would be 500 grand in compensation, his contract expires at the end of the calendar year, Um just be interesting to see what happens, obviously we've had Barry Hepburn and Liam Morrison go over to Bayern Munich in Germany, so Ben Doak left the club to join Liverpool at 16 and now in the Scotland squad today. Maybe that shows Daniel what he can do because Doak got opportunities at Liverpool um, until he was kind of ravaged by injury. But I don't know. It'll be interesting to see as well. You've got young Scots abroad who are thriving. Like Sir Lewis Ferguson, Max Johnson's just won a double with Sturmgratz. Aaron Hickey done really well in Italy before he joined Brentford. Now he's in the Premier League. So there are opportunities for these guys and I'd be very interested to see how Daniel Kelly gets on and in Leverkusen, but I really hope he does stay at Celtic. It's interesting because we're going to have two spots in our midfield, right? And I know we, me and Quinny, have talked about this months ago in terms of like we, the way that we pro- progress players through the squad, right? Because so we're going to have O'Reilly's going to go essentially out the other side, out the top to, you know, Pena Milan or whoever he goes to. Yeah. And the clamour will be that we replace him with somebody, you know, a 10 million pound midfielder. We've got Bernardo who, you could argue is he's played enough that he could play more or that, you know, we go and sign somebody else. So if you, if you imagine that we have six midfielders, we're going to lose two. Of them. Now we'll probably go and sign one, but we do also have Odin home. He was the best player in Norway. He's just not seen at all. Mm-hmm. Like you'd think either he's going to play for us because we've now had a year where he's learned the system and got used to living in Glasgow, or he's going to go out. You presume on loan, they're probably not just going to punt him. So like there is, a, there is space in that midfield where you've got Hatate, who's missed three months of every season he's ever played with us with injury. Like, his hamstrings are made of, you know, cheese strings. So, like, there is going to be game time there. Carl McGregor is older than he was. Like, yeah. there is going to be places there. And it'll be a real test of what, you know, Ange, God love him. Like, he was not a guy for throwing in guys he didn't trust. Like, he didn't really do that. Even with Ben Doak, he's, you know, as we can see, the fact that the Scotland squad played for Liverpool was the best talent we've had come through the academy in a long time. Like, he didn't really... Doug never thought he was going to get a chance there. Although, admittedly, you know, Liverpool's Liverpool with Jürgen Klopp's a bit different league to... I mean, yeah. Leverkusen are doing very well at the moment, but they're not Liverpool. Um, it'll be interesting to see now, like, if Brendan Rodgers, who I have to say in the past has also not been enormously keen on this as an idea, if he says, OK, well... The six mid the six mid midfield spots, you're gonna be the sixth midfielder. Like that's when you're gonna get David Turnbull's minutes, or you're gonna get Paolo Bernardo's minutes. Like, would we and it, would we as the support say we wanna see that? Because there is a lot of bedwetters in the Celtic support who'll go, no, 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 go and spend, you know, FFS sign Martin Boyle. Like that's <laughs> this is the logic. So we have to be real. We can show faith in our academy because half the problem with our academy isn't that we don't produce players. Yes. You know, it's that we don't actually give them an opportunity because we think, well, we have to win every week, which we do. So, yeah. you know, this year's I saw a brilliant table today that was like every Celtic team since 2000. This year, this year's team was about sixth best, I think. Like, so we we, we win something like 86 percent of the points available. So, like, could we then say, okay, we want to risk that for five points a year because we play kids from our own academy like no we're never going to do that so you know yeah when I think do these kids ever play I don't when you look at them that's our problem yeah I know that's the issue there's a lot of guys who don't perhaps really have 
faith in the young guys. Like I'm sure this summer the big debate's gonna be sign a left back, sign a left back to, to give Greg Taylor help. But you look at Mitchell Frame come on against five year olds in the Champions League, right. done yeah. really well. You've got Matthew Anderson, who right now is out on loan in the second tier in Austria and who's just had a really good season there, picking up something like seven or eight assists, scoring a couple of goals for them as well. He's doing really well playing as a left-back. He captained the B team last season, actually. So I'll be very interested to see how he progresses when he returns to the club. So you've got a couple of decent options in there and Bernabe is going to come back halfway through the season as well. I just wonder whether left-back is going to be as high priority as what we thought it was. But Adam Montgomery signed a new contract too. Montgomery signed a new contract as well. That's another one to throw into the mix. So perhaps they're kind of looking to beef up that left back spot and to give it for academy players. I don't know. Um, but going back to going back to Kelly, you've also got Boston Lawal to throw into that midfield mix of players who are going to get opportunities along with your Oden home and guys like that. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I really hope Kelly stays. Uh, going back to the original point, um, just I think it's just going to be a wait and see. It's going to be up to him. Do you think there's think not fun. to not to divert massively from the running order, but no. we maybe can keep this for later. But like one of my theories looking at the squad as it is now, I was just thinking this like last week. I'm lying in bed, can't sleep, and I'm like, well, not Celtic's so youth policy is, but this is what it is, how cool I am. But guys like I'm not so much Palmer, but like guys like Yang, um, oh, like home particularly, we've now seen them, right? Um, with a year under the belt, if if we said next year we're going to start Narotsky at centre half and we're going to start, you know, Yang is going to be a more prominent player in the squad and Holmes going to be take Bernardo's minutes, like fans would lose their mind. But like these guys are still so young and we've invested a whole year in them. And you can either say, well, they've had a year and they've not done anything, or, you know, we signed all these guys in bulk and, you know, They've had a year to get used to Glasgow, all this other stuff that we say, you know, Yang doesn't speak English or Holmes only 18 years old or whatever he was. Like, if we were to say, okay, this next year, that's going to be our, we're going to give those minutes to those young guys, we might actually see if they were any good. Because I couldn't tell you if Holmes was any good. And like, with yeah. Yang, you know, sometimes he's good and sometimes he's terrible. All, all young wingers are kind of like that. Is that not, am I being mental here? Is this a stupid take? No, not on Yang, definitely not, because I think he's still got a lot of growth. Oden home as well. And what he's shown, he came on at Ibrox in that 1 0 win at the beginning of the season. He was very mature, really good challenge on Todd Cantwell towards the end of the game, just before the final whistle was blown. I know it's Bucky Thistle, but he scored against them in the cup. And I don't think yeah, don't, don't think he's been seen since. So, yeah, I, I don't think that's a, a crazy take. I think that's a fair assessment. I just wonder if, like, what, what, why isn't he? If we knew we weren't going to play him, why isn't he playing for somebody else on loan? But you know, that's just every single. You could say that about five Celtic players. Like, why aren't they Hibs, Ross County, yep. whatever? I think we've got like that kind of. Like, it kind of comes into the the Kelly and everything else. But like, the squad is like quite bloated at the moment, and the only kind of like silver lining we, we've been taking from this since the summer is like, if you can develop them to any extent, then it does give you. Uh, some transfer fees to claw in later on. You know, you can't bring in transfer fees if you've not got players to sell. And since we don't seem to produce ones of our own, even like we've seen Quan go on loan, we've seen Mickey Johnson go on loan. So like if there's a wee bit of lubrication to be done, then that's always fine. But I was thinking the other day uh, when I was listening to Bernardo chat, I was thinking like Quan and Lawal, Lawal was maybe just a, maybe a bit more exciting, but Quan could be the Bernardo like for next year, like the backup centre mid that you need for 20 minutes every once in a while. Um, perhaps from what we've seen him uh, do at St Mirren. But I think if for, for Kelly in particular, like I don't think he gets that room. I don't think he gets Turnbull's minutes. I don't think he picks up Hitate's, you know, second half of matches that he doesn't want to play or he can't play or whatever it is often enough to develop to the level he can. Like if you're thinking about this in the kind of money ball sense of things, if we were to like transfer some players in and out, we let some loans cancel, you'd probably say one of the most exciting Scottish players you could bring into the team would be Lennon Miller. And if you brought Lennon Miller in, there's no chance in the month for Sundays Danny Kelly is going to be, on what we've seen to this point, going to be pushing past him or even stay within the picture, I would imagine. So I think if like Leverkusen are in for the guy, like he's, o he's probably only going to develop more. Even being in the reserves at Leverkusen and getting a loan to a wee team in Austria or getting a wee loan to a team in Bundesliga too and uh, developing there for a couple of years. Because uh, like you say, 
with some of the other guys that have left and went onto the continent and stuff like that. Like, there is just a level of development you get with all the extra elite sports science stuff at your disposal, as well as like Leverkusen develop players into first team professionals. Like they do that continuously, you know. So we've, you know, so it's one of those ones where it's a lovely name to see. But that was kind of where I'm thinking is like, are they actually in for him? You know, I know he scored for us and he's done all right. I think if they are actually in for him, we do see him leave. And another name that does come into this like news thing, if you like, is uh, Vata. It sounds like he's been offered again another contract. And when I read that, I'm like, why? Like, why is this not sorted still? Like, why yeah. does nobody know what he wants to do or what could happen? And I think you know? if if Rocco Vata wanted to stay at Celtic 100, percent he would have signed that contract by now. Um, that's my view on it. I don't think there's going to be a lot of opportunities for him next season, especially if a striker is signed like Adam Ida or seen rumours of Odson Edward piping up again. It just depends. I don't know what happens with him. It's it's just one of them ones where it just looks like he's going to go on somewhere in Italy, Como or someone like that who's just been promoted to Serie A and, and banging the goals there. And you'll see it on Twitter every Sunday night when the Serie A's on and you'll be with your head in your hands. Why did we let him go? Um, I don't know. It's just If he signs, then happy days because he's a really good talent. But I, I personally don't think he will. Here's, a, here's my, what I do on Football Manager. I would sign Lennon Miller and I would say... As part of the deal for Lennon Miller, do you want Danny Kelly for a year on loan? Because you never know if you Lennon Miller's main yeah. like he is a good player, but like he's also been able to play for St. Mirren. Like he has a space in St. Mirren's team that was available to a player like him that isn't in Celtic's team. So you say Danny Kelly, could you play for St. Mirren? If you play for St. Mirren and be one of their best players, hey, probably get a game in Celtic eventually. But at the moment yeah. I've got no idea. And we what my fear is is that we'll end up like like we have with old and home like you know obviously josh you follow the, lo- the lone guys more often but like kwan goes to st mirren plays looks quite good or at least good enough to play for st mirren like old and home probably is good enough to be the best player at st mirren but we never know because he never plays like i don't yeah. know if he's been injured or what and obviously my ongoing rant for Celtic is that they never tell you he's injured and nobody goes and asks them mm-hmm. they don't have to publish this but like we I would I would just love these guys to actually play in the Scottish League, not for Celtic, and to be on loan and then go, okay, if you're the best player at Hibs or St. Mirren, then you're probably worth being Paolo Bernardo 2.0 at Celtic. And we already have yeah. it, but we don't know. Yeah, Ryan Christie is a brilliant example of that when he went up yeah. to Aberdeen and it really excelled. And then he comes back to Celtic and turns into a key player. And if his contract wasn't allowed to be ran down the way it was, he'd probably have left for decent money down to the Premier League. Um, can so yeah, can I, I give you a Ryan Christie stat? Go ahead. Number of shots put over the bar in the COVID season? No, but Ryan Christie had the highest number of shots in the Premier League without scoring all year. That doesn't wow. surprise me. And yes, he was on 1.3 shots per 90 for, uh, for Bournemouth. Because Andoni Iraola probably just told him to shoot from outside the box. Yeah, no, he was playing diff- in fairness to him. And I can't believe I've just said in fairness to him. He's not playing as the number eight. No, he's playing further back. He's but further still, back, yeah. he's, he's having one and, a, one and a half shots a game. Uh, he's got two XGs worth, which in Ryan Christie is probably like 200 shots. But he, uh, yeah, highest, I think it's the highest number of shots in the Premier League without scoring. That's mental. But I think he's one where put him out on loan to a team like Aberdeen who are high end of the lower teams in the league and done really well. Quan, I think he'd have really kicked on at St Mirren if it weren't for injury. He's back to South Korea right now for rehab, which is it's a bit of a pain for him. And a really young player, I like talking about guys like Lennon Miller is David Watson at Kelly. Um, won a couple of Young Player of the Year awards. Really big fan of him. He's a Celtic fan as well, I'm told. So that would be interesting if that was one that could happen. He's still only 18, 19 and scored the last minute equaliser for Kelly at Parkhead um, in February. So it's a guy only 18, 19. I thought he yeah. was like 30. Uh, yeah, I know, because of the beard, he looks a bit 25, doesn't he? He's only like 18, yeah. Wow. The ginger Maeda, I heard somebody call him, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, just out of interest, on, on the I can't believe how old they are, Daniel Kelly is older than Lennon Miller. Yeah, Lennon Miller's only like 17 still. It's 17, yeah. 17 till August. So, and yeah. So there you go. That's the guy who's had an opportunity to play first team football. Which Daniel Kelly's yeah. never had. Yeah. 
I think somebody like him, I haven't had this time on. Like, and I know you want to play as much as possible, right? But if we are thinking about the like, succession and stuff like that, he could be definitely like a second layer mid that would get 30 minutes most weeks, get the irregular starts, you know, yeah. and playing more cup games. And that would, yeah. uh, that would be a good one, I would say, if that's the kind of, you know, the, the way it goes. Um, we were going to spend some time maybe having a look at the Scotland squad or going over it or whatever. But is there, you know, like we've got some names in there, of course. Is there anything that we would want to like chew on or, or bat about before we get to the cup final weekend? Not particularly, but just raise the point that it's really, really good to see James Forrest in there. Uh, his first call up since the last Euros, and he 100% deserves it for his form over the past couple of weeks. Really excited to see what he can do back in a Scotland jersey because seeing how crucial he's been before, game against Israel. I think it's 2019, 2018, where he scored a hat trick at Hamden and a 3 2 victory. So, really good to see him in. Tony Ralston as well, whether it's him or Ross McCrory that gets the start at right wing back against Germany. I really hope it's Tony Ralston. He's shown herself. I would hope it's Tony Ralston. That's maybe my green tinted specs on. Um, but he showed throughout this season for herself that he can be dependable when called upon. Uh, trophy day, decent performance. Come on in the derby. I know Mijos, a wee. Rice smile there. Um, come on in the derby and he's, he's half decent. So you'd much rather an Aaron Hickey be in there, maybe not Nathan Patterson. Uh, but good to see good to see him get called up. Greg Taylor as well. He's going to be third choice left back. He's likely not going to get any minutes. That's the squad there. Um, ben Doak, obviously, ex Celtic. And then Cal McGregor, which is 100% expected. And Ryan Jack, which. Oh, Celtic's oh. playing. So, so there yeah. Is, yeah, so there is one Rangers. Oh, Ryan Jack as well. He doesn't play. Yeah. Really. That is um, that is such a obviously like as as a Republic of Ireland fan, I'm well aware of that this happens to everybody. But like they, that's the difference between your best player and your worst player. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. You've, you've got, got like, and, and yeah. to someone like Ryan Jack, the difference is stark. Xander, Xander Clark. <laughs> Yeah. To be fair, he was decent against Rangers at the weekend for Hearts. Xander Clark. But, yeah, like it's, it's annoying that the amount of injuries Scotland have at the minute is causing guys like Ryan Jack because instead of him, you'd have Lewis Ferguson in there who's flying in Serie A for Bologna. Um, yep. And obviously you'd have Aaron Hickey, guys like that. So injuries have played a bit of a part in this squad, but I hope the guys that are called up can do well. Yeah. And uh, you know the one a... thing that always gets me about Scotland squads that like, especially when I look at this, like it's great seeing Ben Doak in there and you know whatever, right? But Ryan Gold has like been on it for like a year in America, and I know yeah. it's America, right, and whatever, but he's doing it. like, yeah, well, he's, he's plays for a Canadian <laughs> team, but he's in it. it's MLS. You know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> I know I'm just America. Oh, blah, 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 blah. right, Canada, fine, whatever. But um, I. How he never gets a look in in these situations at all it just baffles me. Like, because he is like he's everything people thought he would be. Granted, he's at a level maybe lower than what people would have hoped. Like, you'd have hoped maybe it's Italy or something like that. You know, Spain, yeah. England. It's not the same as MLS, obviously, but still all the same. Guys in the peak of his powers, and when you look at that team there, like somebody like Gold just gives it a bit of X factor, even from the bench or in a. You know, maybe to start a game where you're expected to win, you can play a guy like him, and you know, you can quickly transform the team a bit easier. But um, yeah, even when there's injuries, it's just weird. I I've still just, not seen him. Just seen a couple of tweets there on Ryan Jack and back to him. Why someone like Connor Barron isn't getting the call instead of Ryan Jack or someone like Danny Armstrong? Um, it's quite. I know Danny Armstrong's a totally different player, but or maybe even Lennon Miller or David Watson is is quite puzzling, but. I have to say, we were talking about this off air, but like, I genuinely forgot that Ryan Jack played for Rangers. Like, he hasn't played so long. I, felt like he's, I thought he'd signed for somebody in like the championship or whatever. But um, I'm going to send you a brilliant, you missed my Simpsons joke there, Quinny. So I'm going to send you the oh, okay. where else, where, where else but America or possibly oh. Canada. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, Ryan Gold, though. Ryan Gold is one of these guys, right? Who, if because he hasn't played, right? Or like he hasn't played in. He, everyone saw him play at whatever sixteen when he played for Dundee United, and then yeah. moved to Sporting Lisbon, where everyone was like, "Oh, great, he moved to Sporting Lisbon." You don't actually watch him play Sporting Lisbon because he does. And then 
he moves to America and he could be the best player in the league. And people would be like, wasn't that the guy who moved to Sporting Lisbon? But because he was so good at a young age, everyone remembers his name. So they go, well, he must be good. So, yeah. But you would hope yes, that the manager of the Scotland national team would actually watch him and work out. But I, have, I have no idea. I did see a video of him saying that he's like, is he not Vancouver's like highest scoring midfielder ever or something like that? He's the captain as well. So he's, 10 games, but... he's everything there. Yeah. He's absolutely reeling it. <laughs> The I, would, father. I would have. <laughs> I was the biggest thing to play for Vancouver Whitecaps since Peter Beardsley in the early 80s. Are you going to see Kenny Miller there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's better than Kenny Miller. <laughs> of course. Um, and on that note, you know, talking about uh, meltdowns, or sorry, Millers, um, this weekend, guys, we've got one more leg to go, or one more final hurdle of the season to try and get, like, you know, when Brendan first came in, the, the, I think one of the main questions when people were like, right, what's the expectations for the season? You know, trebles were the steady diet of Brendan Rodgers uh, the first time he was here. That's also not the case uh, this season. But coming into this game, like, it doesn't feel like there's that much pressure on Celtic, but I think there kind of should be a bit here. You know, we don't yeah. want to get mugged off in this game, give them any sort of silver lining to take into the summer with them. Yeah, you know, there should it, be a good bit of pressure on the win. Yeah, it's one where, on paper, Celtic are the favourites, just... So they've got the momentum. Rangers have taken one point out of 12 in Glasgow derbies this season. Rodgers has lost one in 17 to Rangers, something stupid like that. So I think Celtic are the favourites going into this one. I don't think the pressure's on Celtic. I think the pressure's on Rangers. Uh, just going with it. They need this to not go into summer on a meltdown. Um, you Because arguably it would be Towers collapsing in Ibrox if Rangers don't win this cup final and, and go into the summer in a really negative note. So they need to win the game. Celtic have already won the league, which is the bread and butter, the big prize. The, it gives you the Champions League money. And Hugh even said this in Clyde One Super Scoreboard a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was last week I was listening to it in the car, but he said, if Rangers win the Scottish Cup final, they will have bragging rights for one day, 24 hours. And then it goes back to Celtic, because Celtic have won the league. And... I think that's a, a fair assessment. Um, I, I won't be too gutted if Celtic lose this cup final. Obviously, you want to win it. Um, but at the same time, I think Celtic have won the league. They've th- That's been kind of the main priority. Obviously, the cup's good and you want to get one over on Rangers 100%. Um, but it will just be interesting. The game itself, a lot of people are saying already that Celtic are going to run out 3-4-0 winners. I've heard suggestions of that already from some fellow fans, but I don't know, cup finals always tight games. You very rarely see a team run away with it in a cup final, even when Celtic played Inverness last season. They gave it a right good go. They made it 2-1 in the 88th minute, and up until when Jota scored the goal, it was somewhat in doubt. So, cup finals are tough games, and this is going to be another one. But the good thing, like I said, Celtic have got the, the momentum. They've, they know how, Brendan Rodgers knows how to beat Rangers, and this Rangers team looks short in confidence at the minute. Even they can't hold on to a two-goal lead at Tynecastle at the weekend, so it doesn't bode well for them going into this game. I'd, I'd much as you say, cup finals are tight games. We have also thumped them four 0 in semi-finals. Like we've really done some semi-finals, which was you know, same pitch, same stuff, same fans, etc. Yeah, I feel really sanguine about it, which is quite yeah, it's disconcerting. Normally, I'm a bit of a shy bag about these things, but. I guess it's because when you've done the, you beat them, you win the title, trophy day, you're like, oh yeah, there is another day to this. There's a fourth part. Yeah. And because the parts one through three were so good, you know. Um, I just think, yeah, I'm, their team is all, I, I, I don't know, we've discussed this previously, me and Connie, before the last game, where it's like, heart is like, oh no, we can remember all the times that we lost to them, but then head is like, we are just a better team than them. We're a better team playing better football. We should be confident. Like, and, you know, I love the punt and I look at the odds for these things all the time and we're, like, really very heavy favourites and we should be, like, like, they're, I have to, again, tran- I can't, I can't never translate the Australian odds are different, but, like, we are massive favourites and bookies don't tend to back losers, like, so um, I think we're good for having, given the guys that got a run at the weekend, a couple of them who needed minutes got it, a couple of them who needed a rest got it, Carter Vickers, for example, like I think their plan will be the same as it always is: lump the ball, hope that Tavernier can get a free kick somewhere in an advanced area. And I think the difference is in the cup final is that if they if we went two 0 up, like they could fall and collapse. Like the Andy Halliday being taken off in the first half isn't likely, but you know 
I do feel like that it'll, it'll it'll either be it'll either be close or it won't be. Like that's how my opinion. yeah, hundred you know, percent. We could have easily that the game at Celtic Park like we like two weeks ago. We we could have been five 0 Like if we'd have put if we put that penalty in, like it got it could have gone a long way on from there. And then yeah, I think that's not. I'm going to say three one because I always say three one, but like that's not out of the question if. If they full on, he's gone it in the second half, and they know they can't win. Like that's happened before as well. But on the other hand, like they, as ever, were Rangers like referees. James Tavernier hitting the free kick in from miles out. Liam Scales, they're just bombing balls on top of Liam Scales, and him going, "I've never seen this one coming." How could have possibly? Who could have possibly foreseen somebody bombing balls with me from a long distance? And me going, um, yes, the- we almost got a full podcast without scale slander. Do you know? <laughs> right. So so. Just on the subject of, of Rogers, uh, I, it's you know there's been a lot of clips going around. There was a brilliant one of somebody on the night that they beat Kilmarnock two one, going, "This is it, this is it. We've won, we've won the league." You know, have you seen this one? I can't remember. Yeah, it was off, right? I've seen a bunch of them. Yeah. But it was the same night that we beat Dundee seven one. Yeah. Then when we were six and up at half time. Anyway, in the six and up at half time game, I watched the highlights back just because. Whatever it came up, I watched there. I, w- I put it in, you know, Rangers two, and whatever it came up. We had a game. We had a Dundee United had a goal took off for offside, and Liam Scales was caught under the ball into it, and it was like, even when the <laughs> lobby's a liability, he got saved by the VAR. And I remember watching Dundee got a guy sent off as well, and I was like, imagine you're six 0 down at half time, and then you get you score, nah, VAR, yeah. and then you get a guy sent off. It was not that night. Anyway, Sino went back, but. Yang made him look very silly. But yeah, that was a... Uh, yeah, as ever, as long as Liam Scales is playing, they've got a chance. But yeah. What I to like here, my, my dream is that we're falling in love, we get a penalty and Joe Hart takes it. To be fair to Liam Scales, I thought he actually done all right in the last derby, at least in his defending. But I feel like see when he got to the halfway line, it was panic stations over whether he was going to pass the ball and it felt like Rangers were somewhat standing off Liam Scales and allowing him to get into the final third because they know yeah, that he cannot play an accurate ball to find a Kyogo or a Matt O'Reilly. Um, it just gives them extra bodies elsewhere. Um, but they'd done that, and it almost didn't pay off for them because he had a shot that Butland had tipped just over the bar, and I'm sure Quinny would have gone absolutely mental if that Liam Scales screamer in the derby went in. Well, he did score a belter against him last year. Uh, I, I hasten to, to remind everyone. Not, <laughs> <mean it>. Intentionally. <laughs> has, he, has, has he scored for us this year? I think he scored one for us this year. Because I was... I was just before Christmas. In the 2-0. Livingston. 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 There you go. It must have been at 2 o'clock in the morning on that one. Um, I think Nerat, incidentally, I know it's completely passe at this point, but Nerotsky played really well at the weekend. He should play. 100%. Nerotsky was brilliant. I thought it was really I mean, see that challenge dead, dead yeah. against St. Mirren, but like that boy can pass, he can tackle. See I reckon he's that in half, absolutely brilliant. But he just blocked, yeah. looked a certain goal. Yeah, 100%. Mike Navrotsky deserves a run of games, but we've only got one game left this season. So I think we'll happen. start next year and people will complain about it and it'll be fine. There you go. There's my I don't think many people like, complain about it. The skills is, saying, skills yeah. is definitely a divisive guy. Still. Yeah, I would say, yeah, a lot of people are. A lot less people are in your camp, Quinny, now about Liam Scales, I would say. Yeah. Well, Did we see it certainly speaking of centre halves? Stephen Welsh, rapid rapid book arrest? Nah, apparently that's not happening, is what the Celtic sources have said in the daily. Can you wait, can you wait for the daily records rapid exit headline when uh, Neil Lennon <laughs> inevitably gets fired in three months? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait and see that one. I found it really funny to see O'Neill was linked to a job as well, like yeah, with the other really? Bucharest. Uh, he's linked to Stoya. Lennon went to Rapid, didn't he? <laughs> that no, would just be funny, he... wouldn't it? Um, nah, I wish it was Michael Beale that got the Rapid job. Yeah, the, Who's the linked Stoya. to Hibbs, by the way? Have you seen that? I've seen Hibbs. Seen? Michael, yeah, bring him back. That would be, oh, that'd be unbelievable. He is absolutely guaranteed to take points off him. Like, guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of people, um, unlikely people who took points off Rangers, I implore anybody with an athletic subscription to find the interview they did with Ian Cathro of late. That was, it was gold. That's all I'm going to say. Go find Ian Cathro of the Athletic. I'll check it out. One, one sure. win, but it was against Rangers. Um, 
I was just going to say for the final, I, that's kind of what I was meaning by pressure. Is like, I do, I, I hope it's still not fucking Palmer's dancing in the changing room before the game and all that stuff, you know, that's like in yeah. it's Joe Hart's victory mm-hmm. lap, you know. I hope it's this it's is game the space, it's final time, you yeah, know, like get the job done. I've got no yes. doubt it will be, but yeah, that's what I want to feel now. And I don't, yeah. everyone feels quite chill, like we're favorites. The head is talking more than the heart is. We should be fine. We're better. We crush them all the time. But I need a wee bit of that. Oh, no, we're definitely like going to make sure we're going to push the envelope. I need that feeling. I need to see look the at, team. Look at all the players' social media posts and look at what they've been saying in the interviews. At the end of everything, they've said one more to go. One more to go. Yeah. Their heads are fully in this cup final. I don't think there's going to be any sense of party time, Palma, doing the conga and the warm up or anything like that. So I, I think fully heads are in this game. I think that's why they let them go after the Curly game instead because they knew that like part of it because like they knew they could sit them for Saturday if they needed to and then it's like yeah. fucking you had like they weren't on the like they weren't on the piss on Saturday night like they did that on yeah. Wednesday yeah straight back in Saturday night take the recovery and then Monday morning here we go again so and I think maybe it's a good place to finish but like the the fact that the women have won like if we can have like a bus parade with the women in it as well that how good would that be so that needs to happen. Yeah, 100%. Mike is going to go with 3 1 as ever. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with 4 0. Maybe as ever. I don't like a 4 0. 4 0 was incredible. Uh, I was actually going to say 3 1, um, but to be a bit different, I'll go with 2 0. 2 1 to Rangers. I never thought you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> James Joe Hart has to get a clean sheet in his last game. Yeah, that's right. Joe Hart clean yeah. sheet, you know, or a penalty save. He needs to do something. He needs to have. Yeah. A big last game, you know, p- take a penalty, pain, something like that. Pain and character yeah. energy. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's going to be drawn that we can sign you guys. I'm thinking floodgates. So, you guys were talking about the fans and the 50 50 split we'll have there. Like, if we get one or two early, that's uh, that's both sides of the coin there. You know, I was actually probably the last thing we'll finish this kind of show on, but I was getting a taxi back from the studio back to the house uh, the other day, and there was a Rangers fan that picked up the taxi. and um, I can't remember how we get talking into football, but it happened. And his words to me were something to the tune of like, obviously we kind of throw back like they won the season during COVID because there was no fans. He was basically saying to me, there's something in that, by the way. Those players are all bottle jobs and blah, 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 blah. And like, you know, all the rest of it. So uh, yeah, I think we get one or two in and then they all turn into that taxi driver, if you get me. And then they're all just bottle jobs and blah, 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 blah. And they're all just on them. And then that's put them to the front three or four. That's just the case with the subway loyal anyway, isn't it? They just turn on the players the minute there's a bit of adversity. Um, so, yeah. 4-0. 3-1. And what are you sticking with, Josh? We're going to host this. 2-0. 2 Rangers. You said 2-1 Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. If anyone is going to the game, do stay safe. I don't think there'll be a Trongate takeover after this one because yeah. it will be like, you know, the parting of the sea after Hamden. So, like, yeah. you know. Stay safe, stay out of trouble, and all that good stuff. Josh, are you going to it yourself, mate? No, I'll be watching the house. No. Oh, lovely. Mike, you going to make the flight for it? No, but I tell you what, I'm going to Bangkok on Sunday. So it'll be, I think it's a midnight kickoff here. It's actually, here's a big knife here. If I wasn't going to, if I didn't have to get on a plane at uh, one o'clock next afternoon, which in Australia we just turned up six hours before, and uh, we have the A League grand final into the Scottish Cup final into the FA Cup final. Ooh, that's fun. And three NRL matches before. And so that would be... Actually, it's annoying because I finished my job on on Saturday night, but I just worked from home. And I could have finished the night before, in which case I probably would have gone to the A-League Grand Final up in the Central Coast. But my mate's gone. But I'm trying to think of anyone Scottish who's playing in the A-League Grand Final, but I'm not sure there is actually anybody. Central Coast well, Mariners, formerly, formerly of... Um, Nick Montgomery, he won it last year, Central yeah. Coast, with Jason yeah. Cummins. But you know, there we go. He's not Scottish. I was say, all the Scots there will be nationalised. They're all half a, they're all Australian passports now. You know, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hail, hail to everyone. Have a good weekend. <laughs>